Here, Muff. this strange-looking copper container, man has made another attempt to create on Earth, for the briefest moment of time, the fantastic energy that nature has produced for an eternity in the center of the stars. Man is seeking to produce what has been called the ultimate energy, the energy of controlled thermonuclear reactions. Our own sun produces this energy at a temperature of about 20 million degrees and pressures which are four billion times as great as the pressure at the surface of the Earth. Can we produce and control such energy on Earth? The problems are enormous. But they do not keep man from reaching for the stars. all over the world are working to create in the laboratory the fusion power of the H-bomb and control it for peaceful purpose. They are attacking the problem from many angles. In many ways, the most unusual of all fusion research projects is the one co-sponsored by the Texas Atomic Energy Research Foundation, T-A-E-R-F, which is composed of 11 investor-owned electric utility companies operating in Texas. This is the world's first and largest privately financed program in the field of controlled thermonuclear research. To help harness the power of the H-bomb for the benefit of mankind, the Texas Atomic Energy Research Foundation and General Dynamics jointly undertook a broad program in fundamental fusion research. The 11 Texas utilities believe that Fusion offers the greatest long-range potential as a source of electric power. And since Texas has no immediate shortage of natural fuel, the foundation is in a position to take and support the longer view, with the hope it will contribute greatly to the world's search for new energy sources. On Torrey Pines Mesa in San Diego, California, at the John J. Hopkins Laboratory for Pure and Applied Science, the theoretical and experimental work is being carried on by scientists of the General Atomic Division of General Dynamics Corporation. This $15 million laboratory complex, with its striking modern architecture and beautiful landscaping, is itself a demonstration of something significant in American industry's approach to science. These facilities rate with the best in the world, and they are devoted to nuclear and thermonuclear research and development in an atmosphere that combines freedom of inquiry with the dynamic leadership of private enterprise. Here, working on the fusion program, are gathered some of the foremost minds in science, all distinguished in their own specialties of nuclear research, and all available to contribute to the success of this challenging problem. But now, before we try to understand these problems, let's be sure we know the difference between fusion and fission, the two ways of releasing energy from the nucleus of an atom. In fission, we split the atom to release tiny particles called neutrons. These strike and split other atoms, causing a chain reaction and releasing energy in accordance with Einstein's formula, E equals mc squared, meaning that the energy produced is equal to the mass destroyed times c squared, the speed of light squared. As for fusion, it is achieved by uniting atomic nuclei. Here are two atoms of heavy hydrogen, also called deuterium. 
In ultra-high temperatures exceeding those in the sun, these isotopes are stripped of their electrons and enter into the state of matter known as plasma. Then stripped deuterium atoms, called deuterons, may collide and fuse, forming a helium-3 nucleus with an escaping neutron and releasing tremendous energy. Or the collision of two deuterons may result in a tritium nucleus and an escaping proton with an accompanying release of energy. As the helium-3 and tritium nuclei are further bombarded, helium-4 nuclei are formed, releasing 17 and 6 tenths million electron volts of energy. With the development of the atomic bomb, man was able for the first time to produce high enough temperatures to start a fusion reaction. The result was the H-bomb. Now we are trying to control this incredible force and put it to work for man. Why do we need it? Well, our entire industrial civilization is founded upon having available abundant sources of energy. A hundred years ago, 65% of our work was done by the muscle power of men and animals. Today, muscle power accounts for less than 1%. Power generated through the burning of fossil fuels does most of our work. The world's population is growing by leaps and bounds. There will be 35,000 more persons at the world's dinner table tonight than there were at breakfast. The population of the United States is growing at the rate of 3 million persons a year. And at the same time, each of us is using more and more generated power. The experts say that over the next 20 years, we must have a fourfold increase in our electricity generation using all forms of fuel, fossil, hydro, and nuclear. If we can find a practical way to produce economical power from the fusion process, then we will have harnessed an almost limitless source of energy. In the oceans of the Earth, there is enough deuterium, or heavy hydrogen, to supply the world with fuel for billions of years, even with a power demand 1,000 times greater than today. In one gallon of seawater, there is an energy content equal to 350 gallons of gasoline. However, the problems of producing a controlled fusion or a thermonuclear reaction are far greater than those related to fission because science must create a condition that does not exist in nature. In the core of the sun, the force of gravity is great enough to confine hydrogen at a temperature of 10 million degrees, which is sufficient for fusion. But on Earth, we must look for other means to contain a gas heated to hundreds of millions of degrees at pressures of hundreds of atmospheres needed to create fusion reaction in what is known as a plasma, the name given to any gas in which individual atoms are torn apart by high temperatures. If we could contain this plasma at hundreds of millions of degrees, the particles would collide and fuse as they do on the sun converting a small amount of nuclear mass into a tremendous amount of energy. But how to heat up plasma hotter than the interior of the sun? And how to contain the plasma at these thermonuclear temperatures? No solid material could possibly withstand such temperatures without vaporizing. It may, however, be possible to confine extremely hot gases within magnetic fields of force. The effect is called a magnetic bottle, and the strength of the magnetic field required is not beyond man's technology. In confining a plasma within a so-called magnetic bottle, the charged particles move in circles about the magnetic field lines. At least, this is the way it should work. But some of the particles do cross the field lines, or actually distort them, so that the plasma escapes from its magnetic bottle. However, that's just the beginning of our problems with the tricky plasma. It tends to rise like a boa constrictor and then escape. Scientists at General Atomic 
are trying to determine exactly how the energy escapes from the plasma. Success of their efforts will bring closer the possibility of achieving a controlled fusion reaction. This is Dr. Donald W. Kirst, the inventor of the particle accelerator, which he named the Betatron. He is one of the nation's senior nuclear physicists and was an important contributor to the 1958 Atoms for Peace Conference at Geneva, Switzerland. Dr. Kirst is the scientist in charge of the fusion program, sponsored by the Texas Atomic Energy Research Foundation and General Atomic. Energy loss in a fusion experiment means possible losses not only in form of particles, but in all regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. When we know the total energy escaping, we can compare it with the total energy supplied to the plasma by the electrical system. At General Atomic, the source of electrical energy is in these banks of giant condensers. For a microsecond, they can pour more electric power into a plasma than is created by the largest power plant in the world. At the maximum, the banks can discharge in a microsecond the equivalent of 75 million kilowatts, or equal to about half the total electrical generating capacity of the United States. When this current is passed through a plasma in a tube, its magnetic field tends to pinch the plasma and pull it away from the tube wall to form its so-called magnetic bottle. In a donut-shaped tube called a torus, this same pinch effect can be created. Currents can circulate with no obstruction. Basis of all current research dealing with the magnetic pinch is the famous M theory, created by Dr. Marshall N. Rosenbluth. Uh, Dr. Rosenbluth is a senior research advisor at the laboratory and one of the world's foremost theoreticians in this field. For an experiment, the torus is placed in this copper container, which is wired to the bank of condensers below. And for this particular experiment, a magnetic field probe is inserted into the torus to record the internal magnetic structure of the plasma under operating conditions. A vacuum pump maintains low operating pressure and also assures a high purity of deuterium gas. And fresh deuterium gas is fed into the torus. After a final check, we're ready to apply more than 90,000 volts to the gas. Earmuffs. Scientists wear these earmuffs as a precautionary measure. In the past split second, the first controlled fusion reaction could have been achieved on Earth. Enough energy was used, but it's still the same story. Too much escapes. Did the particles themselves escape? In another laboratory at General Atomic, an atomic beam apparatus is used to find out. And metallurgists are at work developing wall materials which can resist the tremendous radiation fluxes. In fact, the fusion project can draw upon every facility, every mind at General Atomic. Turning from the particles to the various forms of light itself, scientists are asking whether energy escapes from the torus as visible light, ultraviolet, or microwave frequencies. Linear pinch tube tests search for these answers. Other experiments conducted with this shock tube seek to develop techniques for measuring ion temperatures in plasma. All ready? Ready. One, two. Is that about Mach 50? No, Mach 75. General Atomic Vice President with overall responsibility for research and development is Dr. Edward C. Kreutz, 
widely known scientist who has been identified with thermonuclear research. Dr. Kreutz, uh, how close do you think we are to a breakthrough in controlled fusion research? No one knows, of course. But if we think of all that has happened since the first fission chain reaction in 1942, we know we shall have plenty of surprises as we gradually learn to understand plasmas better. We understand that learning about plasmas is teaching us new facts of nature important in other fields. Well, most of the universe exists in the plasma state. When we really understand the physics of plasma, we will know a great deal more about the universe. Specifically, what about controlled fusion as a source of electric power? Let's be optimistic and look beyond the immediate problems of understanding the physics, and then beyond the job of doing good engineering of suitable devices. And let us further assume that we can ultimately build a plant that can convert fusion energy into electric power economically. Exciting possibilities are open to our imagination. Power for pumping water to the deserts, power for changing the weather, or even for propelling man and his scientific equipment to other planets. Indeed, for doing most of the mechanical work of civilization, as well as heating our cities of tomorrow. The incredibly large supplies of deuterium in the oceans can, in principle, provide an almost unlimited fuel supply. Power for our world of tomorrow, from the energy process of the sun and the stars. Power in infinite abundance for the betterment of mankind. Power that lies waiting for us in the oceans of the earth. Enough power in a child's pail of water to heat, light, and cool a home for a year. The challenge of harnessing that power has been accepted by the companies of the Texas Atomic Energy Research Foundation and General Dynamics. Together, they are engaged in what may be the most important peacetime scientific effort ever undertaken. The rewards of success would benefit all humanity.